Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and today we are going to be talking about lenses, specifically the lenses from Nikon for the F mount. And honestly, out of all the camera makers out there, Nikon has had the most confusing when it comes to lens nomenclature. And that's probably because the F mount has been around for such a long time being first released in 1959. So of course things have changed and honestly it comes down to being a bit of an alphabet soup. So hopefully today I can help unpack a lot of the confusion and give you a brief primer on how to identify and read your Nikkor lenses. So let's get into it. So before we continue, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is going to be a bit of a deep dive and it's completely aimed at camera nerds. But also if you're new to the Nikkor system, specifically the F-mount, this might actually help you understand what lens you have and what you can do. So I'm going to be tossing around a lot of terms, a lot of letters, a lot of acronyms, and I may not always be 100% right. It took a couple of months to actually research, script, and take notes. I did a lot of reading in books, a lot of reading online. So I'm fairly confident that I'm 90% there, but if I have missed something, please make sure to leave me a constructive comment below. All right, so if this is your sort of thing, keep watching. If not, I'm glad you made it this far, all right? Let's dig into it. When Nippon Kogaku, the company we know as Nikon today, was formed in 1919, their primary customer was the growing Japanese military in the post-World War I period. And while they worked mainly on optics, such as microscopes, binoculars, rangefinders, periscopes, there was this new thing on the battlefield, and that was the military airplane. And one of the things that these airplanes could do, especially in the, and were used as such in the First World War, was aerial surveillance, and that required photography. So Nikon went to the capital of camera optics in the world, that is Germany, and in 1921 invited a team of eight German optical engineers to come and teach the Nippon Kogaku people how to build camera lenses. And the first lenses were of a Tessar design. And the first mass produced lens by Nikon was the Anitar 12 centimeter F4.5 or 120 millimeters. The Anitar line ended up being a 7.5 centimeter all the way up to a 36 centimeter lens when they were in production. The Nikkor name is a combination of Nippon Kogaku and the letter R, which was often used to indicate a camera optic. I mean, take a look at Rockor, same idea from Minolta. The Nikkor name first appeared in 1932 and has been applied to Nikon optics all the way up to the new Z mounts that are available today. Nikon's original lens mount was based on the Contax rangefinder mount. In fact, they're so similar that you can interchange the lenses. There's a bit of difference between them, but not enough to make the lenses incompatible. But this was a lens mount designed for rangefinders, and the SLR is a completely different beast and allowed for faster lenses to be built. So engineering-wise, the F-mount that was released in 1959 has not changed much to the final iteration of the F-mount. It remains a three-lug bayonet system with a 44mm throat and a 46.5mm flange to focal length distance. Nikon and Pentax are the only two camera manufacturers who have maintained their original bayonet mount from its initial release to their autofocus technologies. And while the original version of the F-mount and the modern version are a far cry from each other, especially when it comes to the technology and what the lenses and the mount can do. The first form of the F-mount that came out in 1959 was simply called the F-mount. Since then, it has been retconned to be the 
non-AI or pre-AI lenses as they lack the automatic indexing technology. The lenses themselves are a, have a single aperture scale or f-stops and features a large scalloped focusing ring and have a solid machined claw or prong attached to the aperture ring around the f5.6 mark. This allows it to interface with a metering head or a camera meter itself. These lenses will either simply have the word Nikkor on it or Auto Nikkor. The designation Auto indicates that the lens has an automatic diaphragm that closes to the set aperture when the shutter is released. And then following that, the earliest versions had a letter designator after Nikkor followed by a dash. These letters indicate the number of lens elements that goes into the lens construction. Nikon used either Latin or Greek words to indicate the number. So for example, if your lens had the letter U in it, that comes from the Latin word unus or one, whereas the letter P is Greek for penta, meaning five. You will also notice that lenses produced after 1972 will have the letter C added after the space. That indicates that the lens has the improved lens coating that came out in 72. So just for a practical example, if you have a lens that is an auto Nikkor P, C, then you're dealing with a five element lens with an enhanced coating. If you have a letter that has two letters that are not spaced, for example, UD, that is unas and deca. Deca meaning 10. So you have a one plus 10 lens, which means it has 11 elements. If you're using these lenses with a metered camera, there is a trick to mounting it. For example, on the Nikkormat FT2, you'll need to make sure that the lens is set to f5.6 and then mount it so that the prong interfaces with a pin on the lens mount. If this pin is on the wrong side, you'll need to pull it all the way to the right manually before mounting the lens. Once you lock the lens in place, you'll then need to stop the lens all the way down to the lowest aperture and then all the way open to index it. If you do it backward, you're going to confuse your camera meter. Of course, if your camera is unmetered, like a plain prism F or F2 or a Nikkormat FS, you really just have to line up the lugs and twist and lock it. There's no indexing required. Of course, when Nikon went and updated their mount to automatic indexing, they changed how the lens's aperture ring interfaced with the camera. This meant that the older pre-AI lenses limited forward compatibility due to this construction. One service that was offered by Nikon was to modify their lens to the new AI or automatic indexing standard. These are often called AI'd or AI modified. This modification would replace the prong with a new one at a second aperture scale, machine out a ridge in the aperture ring to allow it to use the new lens mount system. You will often find hack jobs on these pre-AI lenses to allow them to mount, but for the most part, these are not as good as factory done jobs. Of course, the problem is if you mount a pre-AI lens on a AI lens mount, you risk damaging not only the lens, but your camera mount itself, which will cause a very expensive repair job. Some older cameras like the Nikon FE, the F4, and the F3, you have the option to flip up this lens mount follower to allow you to mount correctly the pre-AI lenses. The downside is you will now be stuck doing stop-down metering which makes focusing difficult because your view screen becomes dim. So in 1977, Nikon updated the F-mount for the first time in nearly two decades. The new automatic indexing, or AI, removed this need to manually index the lens every time you mounted it. These lenses have no markings to indicate that they're either AI or AIS. They also dropped the letter 
to mark the number of elements and any special coating. Instead, there's now a small machined ridge on the aperture ring and a second aperture scale that allowed it to be viewed through an optical window into the viewfinder. This ridge is around F8 and it automatically interfaces with a follower around the lens mount. These lenses, however, did maintain the ability to mount on pre-AI cameras. So around the f5.6 mark, there is still a machined prong, but it now has two punch throughs that will illuminate the two aperture ratings on either side of the f5.6 mark. If you do mount them on a pre-AI camera, you do still have to manually index that aperture. But honestly, if you know how to do it, it's quite easy. And probably the best part about AI and AIS lenses is that they are forward compatible. You can mount these lenses on a modern digital SLR or any autofocus SLRs, and you get limited support. You will still need to manually focus them and your, your exposure modes are limited to manual and, and aperture priority. But it offers up a really nice option to add a second set of lenses to your modern DSLRs, and I love using my manual focus lenses on my D750. So in 1981, Nikon again did a minor update to the AI mount called AIS. And the one way you can tell that your lens is AIS is that the last, the smallest aperture will be marked in orange and there'll be sort of a half moon trench machined into the lens mount itself. The main purpose was this, was the main purpose for this change was what's known as the fast program mode that was first introduced with the Nikon FA. The idea is that on longer lenses, those above 135 millimeters, to ensure the shutter speed was fast enough to avoid any camera shake when using the longer lens. So if you're using a 135 millimeter lens, if you're in full program mode, the camera will know, oh, hey, wait a minute, this is an AIS lens. I should set my shutter speed to anything above 1 250th of a second. Another interesting entry into the AI line of lenses is the Nikon Series E. This was a set of both AI and AIS lenses that were designed for budget or consumer level SLRs, such as the Nikon EM. While these are AI lenses, they all lack that indexing prong, so they were not fully backwards compatible. The first Series E lens came out in 1978, and the last one was introduced in 1981. These were often built to a lower spec, and a lot of people view them as trash. In fact, the Series E 28mm f2.8 is considered one of the worst lenses that Nikon ever built. I beg to differ, I used one and I use a autofocus lens that uses the same lens construction and I honestly have not gotten a bad image out of it. Yeah, it's probably not the best, but I'm not a pixel peeper. So there you have it. In 1983, Nikon released a pair of modified AIS lenses. These added an, an autofocus motor to the lens itself and these were labeled with AF Nikkor, but they also still had an an aperture ring and an indexing prong connected to them. These were designed to only be used with the Nikon F3AF and there was an 80 millimeter and a 200 millimeter version of it. The system itself ended up being a dead end. And the final iteration of the AI-AIS is the AIP. These added electronic contacts and chips to the lens and while they remain auto manual focus lenses, they can be used on cameras that have matrix metering and full program mode and take advantage of that. Only three lenses were ever produced by Nikon in this line, and it's a 500 millimeter, a 1200 to 1700 millimeter, and in 2001, the 45 millimeter f2.8 for the FM3A. These lenses will have a P designator after the aperture rating. So uh, Nikkor 45mm f2.8 P. Through the 90s there was a several third-party options that offered to chip 
any of these lenses. These aren't really called AIP, they're often called chipped, and I can't really vouch for the quality of that modification. While Nikon had an autofocus system in 1983, it was severely limited and they honestly thought that it would only be ever used by sports photographers. So it ended up being a dead end. Of course, that all changed in 1985 when Minolta released the Maxim system, or the A-mount, and ended up getting the title of the first commercially successful autofocus system. So Nikon released an updated autofocus system in 1986 based around the F-mount. These lenses are labeled and continue to be labeled AF Nikkor today. Now, even though their earlier system did have the focusing motors in the lenses themselves, when the AF Nikkor came out in 86 with the F501, they decided that they would put the autofocus driver in the camera body itself and then couple it to the focusing mechanism in the lens through a mechanical interface. It is a flathead screwdriver essentially, so it's really nothing special. So the first three generations of lenses relied on cameras that had the autofocus motor in the body for the most part, and we'll get into that later. So the first generation AF Nikkor lenses took on an appearance similar to that which you'd find with the Minolta Maxim lenses. These have a small manual focusing ring, they maintained an after ring and were themselves AIS lenses because they maintained that after ring and that carve out in the lens itself, which meant that they were backwards compatible with any camera that had the AI or AIS support, which meant that you could take your autofocus lenses and manual, manually focus them. But that problem was that really tiny auto manual focus ring. So the second generation lenses just changed the outwards, com um, outwards com cosmetics with a much better manual focus ring. Although personally I find that AF lenses are a little bit loose on that manual focus so I don't really like using them on my manual focus cameras. The third generation of these autofocus lenses are the D-type, and you really can tell the difference because they'll have the letter D found after the aperture when you are looking at the lens itself. We often will call these AFD or type D lenses. And what they really did was they were able to transmit focal distance to the camera to um, a Nikon speed light and so that the flash could set the power based on where you are focused on. Really great if you do a lot of flash work or need a lot of fill flash. It just makes it really easy to work with. As I said, these first three generations of lenses relied on the focusing motor to be in the camera. But in 1992, Nikon decided to start experimenting with putting the focusing motor back in the lens. These first ones were called AFI, I standing for internal, and these were mostly on super telephoto lenses just to help speed up the process. This was further improved in 1998 with AFS lenses. This became a much more common designator and continues to be used today. So you'll note that on the lens itself, they'll say AFS on the lens nameplate, and on the bottom, they'll often be marked with the letter SWM, which stands for silent wave motor. This has become the standard of all Nikon lenses through the later F mount and into the Z mount today. In the year 2000, Nikon released their fourth generation autofocus lens. Much to the annoyance of photographers everywhere, the new AFG or G type lenses removed the physical aperture ring thus stripping the lenses of being AIS and backwards compatible with manual focus and older autofocus cameras. You can still use them on these older cameras, but you're going to be stuck with either full program mode or shutter priority mode. The oldest camera that will allow full functionality of your G-type lenses is 1987's F401 which is surprising because the Nikon F4, which came out a year later, 
definitely is not fully 100% compatible with G-type lenses. These lenses are still D-type lenses in the sense that they transmit distance information and 90% of them have the silent wave motor, so AFS. But some kits lenses still retain the need to have that internal focus motor in the camera body itself. The fifth and final version of the AF Nikkor lenses and of the F mount as a whole came out in 2008, and this was the E type lenses or AF E. These removed any mechanical linkage with the camera, relying solely on electronics to stop down the lens. These are G type lenses, so they lack an aperture ring, and they're also D type lenses, as in they transmit the distance information to the flash. They are, however, unable only to be able to be used on cameras produced after 2007, which means you can't even use them on any 35 millimeter SLR released by Nikon, even the mighty F6. All right, if you've made it this far without stopping the video, I want to thank you at this moment. And also, if you like this sort of content, please let me know in the comments. And also, any constructive kind criticism you have or corrections that you feel that need to be made. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification icon, and as always, give me a thumbs up. Every little bit counts, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Okay, so moving on, we've covered the major nomenclature and lens types that Nikon has released from 1959 to 2008, but there is a lot more nomenclature and acronyms and letters out there. So we're gonna rush through these in no particular order. So if you see a lens that is marked PC Nikkor or PCE Nikkor, what you have is a perspective control, control lens. These are mainly designed for landscape, architecture, you can even do panoramas with them. The first PC Nikkor lens came out in 1968. It was a 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. There's no physical connection between the lens and the camera body itself, so they're a little annoying to use. You really want to use these lenses on a tripod to get the maximum effect that they can do, and you will need to manually meter the exposure either using the camera meter or an external lens, an external light meter, and you'll have to remember that once you have set your focus, you'll need to manually close the diaphragm of the aperture. Of course, this all changed when the E-type lenses came out and they leveraged that electromagnetic um, aperture and the electronic contacts. There is also D, straight up AF D-type PC lenses as well. These are often quite expensive, even the original 1968 copy. If you see a lens that's marked micro Nikkor, that is a Nikon macro lens. First introduced in 1956, Nikon's macro lenses are world renowned for their true one-to-one -one replication with little or no magnification. You can find these in all types of lenses from pre-AI all the way up to AF and AFS types. Um, and honestly, I've only ever had one. I've had the 60 millimeter F 2.8D micro Nikkor. Fabulous lens, but I'm not a macro photographer, so I got rid of it. If you see a lens marked zoom Nikkor, it should be fairly self-explanatory. This was used on early zoom lenses with variable focal lengths. The use of zoom Nikkor was dropped around the age of autofocus, although you'll find this on pre-AI, AI, AIS, and Series E lenses. Lenses labeled DC Nikkor are defocus control lenses. These are highly specialized and Nikon only ever produced two of these types of lenses. It's good to know that they're not soft focus lenses, rather the DC control allows the photographer to adjust how the out of focus elements are rendered while the in focus elements remain in focus. It's very subtle, very specialized and aimed primarily at portrait photographers, which is why they were ever only released as 105 millimeter F2 and 135 millimeter F2, both of them being D type lenses because fill flash. Internal and rear focusing lenses. Internal focusing lenses are marked with the letter IF 
and they were first introduced in 1976 when Nikon engineers realized they could avoid having the front element move while focusing and instead moving the internal elements of the lens. This achieves a much faster and closer focus. Rear focusing lenses are marked RF and they were first introduced in 1988 and work on a similar principle but instead of having internal or the front element moving, only the rear element moves. Lenses that are marked ED indicates that they have extra low dispersion glass. There are two ways that you can tell that your lens has ED glass. And the first is a gold band on the lens itself and yes, this is actual real gold. The second is of course the letter ED on the lens body itself. ED glass was first introduced in 1975 and added hardening against outside elements, eliminates secondary chromatic aberration, and has a lower refraction index. First introduced in 2000, VR lenses or vibration reduction lenses will have the letters VR marked on the lens itself. The original letters are in red, but if you have a second generation or VR2, these are marked in gold color. The idea is to help reduce camera shake, allowing a photographer to shoot at lower shutter speeds, and was originally found mainly on telephoto lenses, but are now pretty much equipped on a lot of other glass. Nano crystal coating, shown as a letter N in gold on the lens itself, this was first introduced in 2006 and is the latest innovation in lens coating. Nikon uses a coating of submicroscopic particles to bend light rays gradually into the glass to reduce flare and reflections. It's very effective on ultra wide angle lenses. If you've taken a look at any of Nikon's ultra wide lenses, like anything really 14 millimeter, the 14 millimeter lenses or the 14 to 24 millimeter lenses, you're going to note that the front element is this big piece of curved glass. This indicates that your lens has an aspherical element. This will also be marked as the letters ASPH. The idea is that this large curved front element helps reduce barrel distortion, especially when focusing at a more reasonable length and keeps your straight lines straight. Um, well, it's not perfect close in, it does a very good job all the same. When it comes to lenses with what's called close range correction or CRC, there's not going to be any sort of mention of this on the lens itself. The technology was first introduced in 1968 and uses floating elements that allows the lens to optimize itself when focusing in close. It was really only used in manual focus lenses and isn't really found in modern lenses. So again, you'll have to look at the lens spec sheet to determine whether your lens has it. I know that the AI Nikkor 24mm f2.8 is a lens that does have the CRC technology built in. If you see a lens marked with either DX or IX, that lens is designed for smaller film formats or crop sensor bodies. The IX lenses were designed around Nikon's auto APS SLRs and DX is for crop digital technology. Now you can use these lenses on full frame cameras, so your 35 millimeter SLRs or your full frame sensor equipped digital SLRs, but you will notice some vignettings at certain focal lengths or certain apertures. But there's nothing stopping you from doing that, just not recommended. The GN Nikkor lenses or are designed to be used with for flash photography. GN stands for guide number and it's, again, it's designed to, you set the lens to the appropriate guide number that you've set your flash power to and it will set the optimal aperture. Nikon only ever produced one of these lenses, a 45 millimeter f2.8 and it really is a pre-AI lens. Reflex Nikkor lenses are ones that use a special system of mirrors to give you long focal lengths within a compact lens body. These were really only on super telephoto lenses and Nikon only ever made three such lenses, a 500 millimeter, 1000 millimeter, and a 1200, 2000 millimeter. These were first put out in 1968 and they're available in pre-AI, AI, AIS, and AF versions. 
they are still monsters, but they're a lot smaller than what they would be normally. And there you have it. It's a rather exhaustive list of all the weird and confusing nomenclature you will find on any of your Nikkor optics. And if you're watching this part, thank you so much for sticking with me until the end. It really means a lot because this is really one of the first times I've done such a video. Again, if you missed it the first time, consider subscribing. What's your, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and hitting that bell notification icon and let me know in the comments, what did I miss? What is your favorite um, type of Nikkor lenses? What systems do you have? I personally have a range of AF, AFD, AFG, AI and AIS lenses. I don't have any Series E lenses anymore, although I really don't think they're that bad. There are some terrible ones in that, but I don't think they're as bad as people think. Um, and yeah, I you will pry my F-mount lenses and cameras from my cold dead fingers or until I can no longer buy cameras that work with them. And even then, I'll be hard pressed to go with a Zen Series um, camera. I, I just don't like mirrorless. I'm sorry, I don't. But that's it for me. Until next time, shoot what you love, with what you love, on what you love. Don't give in to the hype. I don't know about you, but after that, I need a cold beer.